Invited Artist Spotlight. Today, our guest is voiceover actress Tasia Valenza. How you doing, Tasia? I'm great, Morris. I'm happy to be with you. You too, you too. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. So uh, where are you from and what got you interested in voiceover and entertainment and uh, all that you do now with public speaking? Sure. Uh, well, uh, I, I always joke and say I'm a recovering actress and a fully functioning voiceover artist because I started as an actress. But, yeah. you know, we, as actors, we tend to be quite damaged because we're rejected so much. Oh, <laughs> so I, you know, I would say AA, Actors Anonymous. <laughs> Hi, my name is Asia. Um, but I used to be an actress, but now I'm a voiceover artist and it's going better. Um, mm -hmm. But <laughs> I'm from New York originally and I... Um, both my parents were actors at my, um, actually in their teens and into their twenties. Um, neither my father ended up opening a restaurant in New York. My mother ended up being a mom and uh, she was a singer. So, but I had it in the blood. So kind of like came out of the gate knowing what I wanted to do and, mm -hmm. and uh, did all the school and camp plays and was just, you know, the lead always. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And my mom, um, uh, would go to New York casting sometimes just to because she was in New York and you know she was like I would do some extra work on soap operas and one day she went to an, uh, an open call and backstage for a movie called Crackers and uh, I said well take, take my work you know my picture for for uh, extra work and they had written the wrong age they needed a young woman like myself my mother had my picture she put it down you know they said ladies we don't need you she's like here what about her and they, Juliet Taylor, who cast all of Woody Allen's films, said, yeah, bring her down, bring her down. So I auditioned an hour later. I was scooping ice cream at Seduto's ice cream powder at the time. And I, she called up and said, you got to get down here. And um, they said, you know, you're wonderful. Uh, we're going to fly you out to Los Angeles. Either oh. you'll be back the next day or packed for six weeks. So it was a little bit of an unusual. I flew to L.A. I screen tested with... Uh, Sean Penn, who was my leading man. Oh, um, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So that's, that's what, how, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? How did you just get thrown in there with one of the most stellar actors ever? Like they couldn't give you like the, the new guy to come out of acting school. I was looking for Scott Bayo because he was much cuter. I mean, I was like, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be screen testing with Spagoli from Richmond High because oh. that was, that was my only reference point was Piccoli for Richmond High. So I was not excited. <laughs> oh, now, had I known, you know, he was going to be Sean Penn, I might have been intimidated. All I was thinking was, that's who my love interest is? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. like so, so luckily, uh, Louis Mall was the director, who was a very well-known, uh, he passed away, but he had uh, just directed Pretty Baby with Brooke Shields and won an Academy Award with Atlantic City. Uh, with Susan Sarandon, so that was that was more intimidating to me. And um, but I screen tested with him, and I got the part. So I didn't return to school. I missed out on my school play. Uh, but all of a sudden, I was thrust yeah. into a movie co-starring yeah. with uh, you know Donald Sutherland and Jack Warden and Wallace Shawn and Christina Baranski and Sean Penn and Trinidad Silva and uh, Wallace Shawn. You know, like. If you if you're an actor's actor, you know these people. They're pretty yeah. uh, magnificent. Yes. So I filmed the movie. I came home from uh, from the, the shoot ten weeks later, and I went back to school. And then essentially, like four months, three months later, I booked all my children, mm -hmm. uh, and I did that for three years. And that I was nominated for an Emmy for that because I, I played the role of Dottie Thornton, who was. Um, Tad the Cad's first wife, if anyone knows that character, he's, he's very popular. So I did that and I essentially came out to Los Angeles after that was over and kind of worked my way up uh, in television, nighttime, and date, you know, uh, series and pilots and all that. But, mm. you know, definitely up and down. I mean, it was not like a straight trajectory. I, right. I, I take my dues. Right. But then I found out, my mom suggested, uh, who was always my, you know, my champion, you should do voiceovers. And I was like, nah, you know, it's so hard to get into and I don't know anybody. And, and this was before the internet. So it's like, you didn't know anybody. You really didn't know anybody. That's uh, right. But being a great mom, she pestered me and uh, I started doing some. And then I realized, wow, you know, for the first time after acting for 15 years, I'm no longer relegated to what I look like. Mm. That was amazing. That was like, 
liberating. It's like, I wasn't mm. too fat. I wasn't too short. I wasn't too dark haired. I wasn't too, you know, none of this, all the things as actors that were rejected all the time is because not because necessarily you're not a great actor, but because you don't fit the part. Right. And all of a sudden that was just released. Gone. And I was free right. to like express my full talent. And yeah. I just kept booking and booking and booking. And whoa, whoa, wait a minute. So, so, you went up and down, up and down, rejection, some, getting whatever, switched to, took mom's advice, switched over to voiceover, and you just start knocking them down. No, it, let no. me, let me, yeah, you know what, yes and no. Let me, it was two years of training, stepping back, not doing well, and then someone gave me my first shot. Okay. I only booked one job six months later, but after that, I started booking another and another. So I made like 10,000 the first year and then I made like you know, 30,000 the next year. And then mm -hmm. the next year gotcha. I made, you know, more. And then I was like, wow, but that's so, so let me just say, yeah, it's never like as easy, but we don't want to have so much time. But <laughs> uh -huh. it's no, no, I get it. I get it. I get but it. I realized that the more I was doing it and the better I got at it, the more I was, I was enjoying it as, as opposed to first, it was like an adjunct. Oh, I'll add this in and I'll make a little here and I'll do it there. But the fact that I was booking more jobs as I went along and then my therapist like said to me one day, you know, your mental health seems to be going up in proportion to the amount of voiceovers you're doing. And I was like, that, that's an interesting <laughs> the, the point. The stress and all that, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So she kind of like, got it in my mind that not only was I doing more voiceovers, but I seemed to be healthier and more self-compassionate. And then I met my husband, who was also a non-actor. And I thought, you know, the first time I tell him I'm going to go away on a desert island with this, you know, Brad Pitt, but it's totally professional. I'm sure he's not going to be here when I get back. So it was, one of those <laughs> things. Not, it was like crickets. I'd have crickets. But it's totally <laughs> professional. And it, you know, whatever you think that's going to happen, it's absolutely fine. You know, right. No, no. I, he's I not that kind of in a month. <laughs> Never going to happen. So that combined with doing really well at voiceovers, I was like, and I, I bookended my on-camera career with another soap opera. I got 12 weeks on The Bold and the Beautiful. And it was, an, it was a, one of those roles, you know, wasn't a contracted role. And so I thought, oh, maybe I could do voiceovers and a soap opera. I started on a soap opera. I'll do mm -hmm. well. I forgot that, you know, in, in soap opera, and what, what makes it so difficult and so great, you say the same line and you add one word each time, exposition, right? So I said basically the line, go get your baby, and variations on that for 12 weeks. Go get your baby. Did I tell you <laughs> yesterday that you need to get on that train and get your baby? Remember, what did I say? Go. Get your baby. <laughs> I was trapped. <laughs> yeah. I was like trapped saying yeah. the same line. Couldn't get to my voiceover gigs. It was like I, I. It was like God gave me that opportunity and said, "You know, you want to see what happens." So at the end of twelve weeks, I called up my on-camera agent. And I said, "I am done. <laughs> I, have, wow. I have bookended my career. I thank you very much." I mean, and let, let me just say, I was oh. working, but nobody was like busting down my door. I wasn't like, "Oh my God, everyone's good." The universe was telling me that this was what I was supposed to do. So right. I bookended right. my career, and that was um, like about 20 something years ago, and I've never looked back. And <laughs> that, luckily, I've gotten to, to do what I love and love what I do, right. uh, just not in the, that capacity, but in this capacity. And then, yeah, yeah well, that's, we'll stick right there because, of course, it, it, it became something else later. Yeah, so that's the point where you drew a line in the sand and said, okay, I'm doing this, and then never looked back. Yeah, you know what? And, and I will say that was a gent that was a six year overlap, a six year overlap. So let me not say, you know, it was like I, 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 I was bad. I started getting better. I got my first gig. And then again, I started like realizing, wow, I really love this and I'm doing more and I'm doing animation now. And now I'm doing promos and now I'm doing narration and now I'm also doing commercials and I'm doing political ads and I'm doing what. So it's like I kept dipping my acting toe into another medium of voiceover, which is so wonderful um and finding out that wow i'm really good because of my I, I really believe because my acting background i was really good because i was able to translate that acting into really connecting with the character and the role as opposed to just you know reading words off a page exactly so um understood now, now let me you said a few things um because you were starting to get these other opportunities in these different fields so let's piggyback on that because I want to get to exactly what a voiceover artist 
can do and what's expected of them and the opportunities that you may have um, that maybe a traditional film or television doesn't have. Because I think that, um, I, my opinion, in the next five to 10 years, like what you do is going to be a lot more of what you're doing demand for that as we get into more esports and VR and stuff like that. Just my opinion, but I'm just, you know, I'm making a prediction. Um, so can you kind of just broadly what it is that you do now and the kind of things, the kind of content that you're able to create? Sure. Yes. Um, well, that's another uh, great aspect of voiceovers is that there are so many uh, variables and mediums. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the one medium that I don't do, and I always hail that the my my fellow thespians that do it, are uh, audiobooks, and that's because I'm a I call myself a sprinter, and I'm not a marathoner. A marathoner, <laughs> when you do a book, a five hour, or a ten hour book, you are a marathoner, and you have to be able to read and read and edit and read. And and I I gave it a, a shot. I took one great workshop uh, with one of the best in the business, Pat Fraley and Scott Brick, these are wonderful uh, teachers of that medium, and mm -hmm. found out that I indeed do not want to do that medium. Other than that, <laughs> but people that love telling a story, a long form story, that is an absolute great way to go. Then there's e-learning and industrial, which have take, taken on a whole nother level because so many people are doing web, uh, you know, web-based videos now on top of uh, theatrical and television so mm -hmm. you know that's become and it's kind of taken over a lot you know it's also mm -hmm. become a disruptor because it used to be like you did class a commercials where it ran across the networks now everything is so disjointed because they're streaming and there's you yeah. know web and so um so it's had you know it's had its positives and its negatives because uh there used to be a much smaller group doing this Mm -hmm. uh, and technology uh, decided who could do it based on it being in New York, Chicago, LA with the old systems that, you know, were in place. Now you need a microphone, uh, a great laptop and an interface and, a, um, you know, some kind of editing software and you can, and the talent and the ability to, you know, hone it and create a demo, but you're not, you're not uh, confined by the technology. By geography. Uh, you're not confined by geography, like we were yeah, topography, and also uh, you know having large scale uh, studios that you know we interface with. I mean, I used to go first to studios, then I had a, an ISDN box, a Telos box that connected like I was to a studio, and now I just have my computer and my microphone, and my interface, and some some software that allows me. So I mean, things have changed, but in the world of voiceover, you can do radio imaging which is, if you know, the IDs, like right now, I've been the voice of uh, Seattle 92.5 moving for 12 years. And I've been the voice oh. of uh, uh, B101 for Philadelphia for like nine years. And so that's one little area. Then um, in the past, I've done political ads. I haven't done those in quite a few years, but that's another, you know, obviously during certain periods are very busy. Then there's the standard commercials, you know, again, where, uh, you know, for television and web. Then there's promos and the promos are the ones that are like coming up on ABC. And I was, yeah. uh, I right now I'm, I'm currently on Hallmark doing that. I was the voice of uh, SoapNet, which was one that went away, but that was, was all the soaps, you know, when they put, so mm -hmm. there's promos. And then um, there's also, uh, we have commercials, from it. there's narration. I did narrated, uh, I just did Discovery ID, so the narration of their of series, My Murder. So these are all areas that, and then of course, animated games and series, which uh, I've been blessed enough to do. So it's really, it's a potpourri, <laughs> a potpourri of opportunities to start. Most, most voiceover artists do start with more of the e-learning and the industrials and the commercials. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's harder to get into promos and trailers. I'm sorry, and trailers is another one area um, uh, to get into. It seems like most, most voiceover artists do start with the e-learning and commercials and they kind of work their way as they get more seasoned into these other areas. Now, do you feel, uh, thanks by the way, that, that was a great explanation. Um, do you feel that one should become an 
because you were blessed to be an actor with Sean Penn, you know, and it was kind well, of... I know, I know, I know. Not everybody gets to start that way. Right. But. <laughs> but, can you... <laughs> that exactly. was just, you know, that was just right time, right? I just, right. I mean, I'm, I'm, just... I'm naming myself, but my Schwab story, you know, the, 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 like nobody understands at a certain age, but, you know, the girl was discovered in Schwab. I was kind of like discovered the right place, right time, and I went from zero, you know, only with like... Right. Like playing Maria and West Side Story. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> you, did, but you did have a right, but you, you now, but you did have some training though. Let's just not skip over that, right? So you had the, the yes, talent yes, yes. back then. Yeah, um, but when I, I'll tell you, my basic training was the mm -hmm. soap opera. You did a play a day. I mean, you you know, the movie was one thing, but when I did the soap for three years, mm -hmm. we got a script. You know, every day that you were on it, you had a script, and you did it from morning to night. You practiced in the morning, rehearsed. Mm -hmm. You were memorized, you acted, you, you rehearsed again, and then you filmed by the end of the day. So doing that for three years was like my college mm -hmm. of, you know, dipping mm -hmm. and my toe. And then after that, I went into acting classes after I was done with the soap. I'd never taken an acting class up until that point, but then wow. after that I did. And then voiceover is, again, it's a totally different skill set, even though it's of the same. And I did have to learn that lesson. It, it, just because you're an actor uh, doesn't mean you can be a voiceover actor right away. I mean, That's what I'm trying to get to. Is like, do you do you need that either that acting experience or training to do well in this in, in voiceover work, or no? Or can you start off cold? So in other words, can you come and say, you know what, I had no interest in acting. I want to do this. I have a nice voice. I want to do commercials and animation for the rest of my life. Like, can you yeah. do that? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> That's my opinion. Um, okay. It has been. I'll tell you a story based on my own. Now, I was an mm -hmm. Emmy nominated actress. Mm -hmm. I had done three years on all my children. I was, you know, well known. I called up uh, one of the agents that I was referred to as a voiceover artist agent. I was like, hi, my name is Tasia Valenza, blah, 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 blah. I know you'd like to have me, right? You know, she said, uh, no, I'd like to send you to my fiance who's a teacher for five months and then you can get back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I was like, did you, did I not right. say it was Tisha Valenza? <laughs> did you, did you hear? So, yeah. yeah, humble pie. Uh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, no, 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 it is, um, it's a craft, it's a subset of acting, and acting is, to have an acting background is fantastic, mm -hmm. uh, but if you truly just want to do voiceovers, you still have to learn just even how to handle a microphone, and there's so, so many people doing it now that you, you you're, the competition, I mean, there's, it's disrupted in a good way that there's mm -hmm. more opportunity, but there's that much more competition because of it. So you really need to have your professional game on mm -hmm. uh, before you can make a, a, even a can, you know a little bit of a living in it because the you know people are, have been working on it for years before, and it's like any any craft that's worth doing, you need to hone it and you need right. to be willing to devote the time to it. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now, how? Um... What, what do you look for in the, in the projects or the shows that, that you, because you just said you get, you had to even stop even through our, our social distancing. You've been getting, <laughs> you've been getting offers and things coming across your desk. Is there anything that you like prefer or that you look for either in um, animation or radio commercials? Is it, is it a preference or just kind of whatever you can float your boat kind of thing? Well, you know, I do love, of course, animation the most because it's, it hones back from my background. You know, when I get to, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a gift. I mean, I don't, you know, 25 years in, I, I appreciate every job that I get. Uh, yep. you know, and I, I don't take it for granted because, mm -hmm. you know, it is, it is like any longevity. I mean, uh, it's a, it's something that's getting more challenging because of the competition to do. But uh, so, mm -hmm. I, you know, even though I've been doing it a very long time, I'm not in a position where like, no, I don't think I'll take that one. You know, <laughs> thank you. You know, I my people try, call your people. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, I try to be thoughtful in terms of like what, what I feel yeah. comfortable with. If I don't feel comfortable yeah. saying the words, I'm not going to, you know, do it. But um, animation, a bit, I do a lot of video games. I enjoy, I love that because, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I literally love getting to be the actor that like inhabits a character. So mm -hmm. um, I just was in a series called uh, Star Wars um, Resistance and I played Vanessa Dosa, uh, who was a commander. And, you know, just being in anything 
in the Star Wars galaxy is just a joy and a gift because I'm a huge oh, fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I played Shaq T in the Clone Wars, so I got to like her revisit, you know, uh, the that that world, you know, in the in another generation of it. And she was this incredibly cool kind of female Han Solo, but a mom, you know, and I mean, like, and to to inhabit a character that's so much cooler than I'll ever be in real life is really, but that to get to imbue a little of myself in it, it's just a gift. So I, I love, I love animation. I love, um, I do love telling a great story. I love narrating. Um, I love commercials because they're fun and they're short little stories. So I really I appreciate all the mediums and I love to be able to like, I mean, I, I can go from radio imaging to commercial to narration to animation in one day. Um, mm. And that's like, pretty mind blowing because it's, it, it really has given me the chance to become a, a master storyteller, uh, mm. which is what, again, my, I kind of translated into give great voice, which is my platform mm -hmm. uh, that I now teach voiceover actors and non voiceover actors how to communicate more successfully by thinking like a voiceover actor. So that's, that's what I've, all that knowledge that I've, I've gleaned from doing it for so long. I now teach that. Yeah, uh, that's that's good. Let's kind of uh, let's talk about that. By the way, your platform because um, it seems like you're 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 going into other things besides. I, I was looking at some of your um, your uh, your work, and it kind of encompasses, of course, all the voiceover, but some other uh, areas where you can use voice to you know better yourself or you know present yourself in meetings. Can you talk a little bit about what your goal is there with your platform? Yes, yes. So I, I was able to do a seven year goal of mine which was to do a TEDx talk um called oh, congratulations by the way <laughs> what congratulations by the oh, way thank That's you. yes yeah that was a big that was again you know yeah I, I i had a newspaper article that said you know but they like times anybody can give a great ted talk and i crossed it out and put tasia valenza can and the day that i you know i got the phone call for it i was like oh i was looking it down and i was like oh, 2013 bam okay well nothing comes quick but <laughs> i didn't yep. give up right right and i had much more to say uh, than I would have seven years ago. So that was probably a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty good thing. Um, but yeah, all of the years of doing this, I've now recognized that, you know, uh, the same things that have made me a great voiceover actor uh, in terms of, you know, understanding my role and how I'm landing my message, uh, you know, whether that's narration or animation or again, and whatever the character or the mom, mom in the commercial or a Poison Ivy in the Arkham games or, you know, um, Discovery ID playing the narrator for the murder. You know, these are all roles. Mm -hmm. And in my life, I also play roles and I'm a mother as a role and I'm a wife as a role. I'm a sister. I'm a daughter. I'm a friend. I'm a voiceover artist. I'm a teacher. And we are all roles. Your roles. We're all roles. We don't think of it that way, but depending on how we play those roles, how we interact with people that we love or to get the job, to play the courageous confident, we mm. feel successful. But when our voice and our intention are not met with the desire that we had, or we don't have that confidence, mm. you know, I call give great voice the art of confident verbal communication. Mm. Um, that if you're not an actor or a singer or someone who uses their voice as their instrument, mm -hmm they're probably not as confident doing that because it's just not what, you know, if you put me into, um, you know, a science lab, I'd be like, yeah. you know, ask me to, to, to type up a, a great, you know, <laughs> a great program, you know, get me, I, I, I'm very limited, you know I'm saying? Well, I, I do one thing really well. Right. I, I'm really good at what I do. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I can teach it because I, I've now translated it that people, if they can understand how to, Think like a voiceover actor in your own life so you can play your professional and personal roles more successfully. So that's what I teach with Give Great Voice. Hmm. And I remember we were talking about the, the character you played in uh, Clone Wars where you said that one person was cooler than you wanted. Is it, is it kind of part of that? Are you kind of, I don't want to say you're, you're inventing a, 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 an imposter of yourself, or is, it a, is that a part of it? Are you still kind of it's, creating it, I, somebody? You know, or? Like, it's, it's, it is in that fake it till you make it. But let me, uh, mm -hmm. the clarification, and, and it's in my TED Talk, so I definitely recommend anyone. Okay. Uh, but uh, but the, there's four questions that an actor asks as mm -hmm. a whisper actor, mm -hmm. uh, for me at least. 
who am I in the scene of my life? Mm -hmm. Who am I speaking to? What do I want? And how does my voice support that intention? So, Poison Ivy, the Arkham Games. Who is she? Well, who is she? She's an eco-terrorist. Some people think she's a shiro, villainous. Those are characteristics, right? I get a drawing. She's also a seductress. That is one of the qualities of Poison Ivy that is absolutely essential to her being. So no matter what, if I'm trying to get my enemy close to me, Batman per se, I've got to get him close enough to kiss me because my venom lies in my lips so I can kiss him and kill him. So my voice follows that intention. And if I were to speak like, Poison Ivy says, come here, Batman, <laughs> probably wouldn't come. <laughs> probably not gonna come because that's not what the voice of seduction sounds like. We know what seduction sounds like. Mm. Shakti, Shakti is a Jedi. She channels the force. She's so cool and so calm, and yet she's a warrior. So authority must come out of me because I have to engender, I have to engage trust and get my clones to follow me. So my voice follows that. Authority, trust. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> oh, the man. voice follows Ooh. the intention. Who am I playing in the scene of my life? And I talked about the universal role that we all play again and again, the courageous, confident candidate. I am trustworthy. I am amazing. I am powerful. I am uh, likable. I am organized. You say that to yourself in the mirror on top of holding your arms out like Superman and with that nice, confident voice. What are you doing? You're supercharging your abilities to play this confident, courageous, and then you dress the part. If you have mm. to play Superman, you got to put on the cape. You got to go mm. be a confident candidate. You want to look professional, mm. right. ready to go, and you go out there and you kill it. I made an affirmation meditation app. It's called Haven. It's okay. completely free. And it's a self Haven? Haven guided affirmations. It okay. looks like a lighthouse. It's a pink okay. lighthouse. Um, it's a gift and a tool that I offer that, you know, if we can improve our self speak on a daily basis, especially right now, mm -hmm. say empowering things out loud, uh, we can, we can program ourselves much more so for success and confidence than trying to do it in our heads. This um, app is, is literally a be kind to your mind app and i and i just want to give that to everybody that uh can use nice. it and empower themselves and I've, I've seen that too and you've seen somebody has really good information but the delivery just so like monotonic and and i think too what you're saying is that once you get that part and like you said you're it's not fake it's something that you're you're living in the story but after a while i'm sure there's a byproduct of that might be your confidence to a point where That's you know, I really am doing this. I really, they really do know what I want, want to hear what I say, have to say. And it kind of like a self-fulfilling kind of thing, you know, exactly. so. Exactly. And that's that actually awesome. from, uh, you know, I'm sure the, this show that you're doing with me is a whole lot better an interview than it was your first or second. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I wish I would have had you do it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I teach. I teach this so that people that would like to have it a little right. bit before. Uh, but, you know, again, look at you now. I mean, again, sometimes you just, you, it just takes longer to do without me. I just have an, it's like mm -hmm. any expert at what they do. Mm -hmm. I just kind of figured out a fun and joyful way to teach what other people teach. Um, just but, but through my particular lens, the lens of a voiceover actor, as opposed to a public speaking teacher or many of the other great experts out there. Just mm -hmm. happens to be my particular lens, but it just is a, it's, it's been something that I feel is something that's quite digestible and if, if somebody wants to work with me that's great or i work with groups but if they can't if they watch the tedx talk and they get my app it's like a it's just like a self you know a yeah. teaching method both yeah. of those they can gain a great deal from that and utilize that in their lives no and if and then one more time if they want to actually someone is i'm sure they're gonna make a ceo wants to see this or entrepreneur and they actually they say you know what i don't want to do the self thing i, I want to teach you to teach me <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to be handheld yeah. and you, you, you do that too though. I love to. I love private coaching. Yeah. I coach every day. It's a joy it. for me because I really take people where they are and mm -hmm. I kind of gently guide them into it. And we, ha and, and to me, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, 
public speaking is right next to like death, right? People fear public speaking more than, and my joy is to take people where they all of a sudden they're not quite so uncomfortable. They don't feel quite so awkward. They feel like they're, they, they can have some fun and bring some emotion and bring some life into it. And, you know, they come alive. It's a really <laughs> wonderful it gives me such joy to see it um students and 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 teachers and you know everyone that that has to i mean frankly we're going to end up being doing more of this now because of zoom because we're going to have less right. ability to be in rooms so it's even more important to utilize these skills than ever sure. uh, because we have less body language i mean like right now i'm moving and i'm you know when you're just ahead you're gonna to have to convey that much more emotion to captivate your audience. So I, I feel like it's right. a very That's important right. time for me to be teaching this and I'm, I'm delighted to do it. And I still love teaching. I mean, I'm still teaching my animation classes um, and I'm still acting myself, but I feel kind of, you know, like my mission is to, to teach this skill set because it, I know it makes people feel good and empowers them. And I really no. know. And you're, also you're our digital communication was taking over too much. And I, I, I was really worried that, you know, we're losing our voices. Animation, you know, voiceover art, commercials. Do you think that will? I mean, what's, what's your what's your feeling about that going forward for the next, you know, six months to a year? How how that'll look like? Well, I, I have seen based on my own experiences that um, recently that you know all my agents um, uh, are sending um, that you must have remote abilities. It used to be that you know people that didn't have their own setups at home. And the software could still go into a studio when they booked. But oh, yeah. the mandate now is uh, you don't even get to audition if you don't have the ability to be the studio set up <clears throat> with something called, you know, like Source Connect or IBTBL with IPTDT, IPDTL, which are these, these software programs that allow you to talk. So that mm -hmm. is definitely a mandate. The, 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 the work is still coming in and the auditions are still coming in. Um, you know, the messaging, of course, is a lot more about um, how to, to, to express that you're there for your clients and, you know, during this difficult time. Yeah. So the messaging has changed. Um, and, you know, I never have done a remote session for video games or animation ever. We've always gone in. So this is, might be the newest. That might be different where all of a sudden mm. they're going to let us do it from home, which I prefer going into the studio because, again, that's where you're really acting, especially... Yeah. You know, in, in a series where we act together, at least in the ones I've been in. Video games, sometimes I'm alone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's something like anything that once the trains left the station, you hope that there will be a return to the old ways. Um, right. Sometimes, you know, there's cost, of, it's a, if it's cost effective and you're saving money, clients want to do that, right? And businesses want to do that. So if they say, wow, we don't have to bring her in and we don't have to use as much studio time and we don't have this, you know, uh, <laughs> we can streamline it that's right yeah so in a way it's great i mean when i when i uh, was when we all got the you know uh, stay at home mandate i was like well still in my closet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my life didn't change all that much because yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been in my studio closet for 20 years um you know not all the time but like enough where i'm, I'm not the challenge of what, what a lot of people are going through now where they're used to being in offices and being, uh, you know, my husband's um, a lawyer uh, and he's a builder and, you know, he's definitely had to like re kind of group because he was used to going into his office and working with his clients and his assistants. So yeah, I mean, and there's many, many people that are, are struggling with that. But as voiceover artists, if you've been doing that, it's become in the last five years much more internal than going out. I mean, the first 20 mm -hmm. 15 years we were always going to studios and always going but technology had been changing that a lot along so that's the good news is that if you were already a professional if you're not and you're kind of in that half you have to make sure you um have the abilities to have your own studio uh, at home. Mm -hmm. otherwise you won't be able to work got it got one last little bit of advice to give anyone that wants to enter voiceover work any capacity if you want to do games animation on the corporate side what would you say to them Got to study. <laughs> okay. You got to get into a. You, I mean, there's a wonder. There's a great community of teachers. Um, there's, there's also if you want to just learn about it. There's so many resources now. There's people that have podcasts and shows, and uh, there's, there's. It's really? A, and, oh my God! There's a. There's oh, a podcast, y'all. So many. 
once you dip your toe into the water, I mean, I, I teach at a place called Real Voice LA. Um, yeah. I'm doing my first Zoom one animation. Uh, it's going to be May 2nd. Yeah. They can sign up. They teach other classes there. That's the beautiful thing now is that you can yeah. literally um, get on a Zoom class that maybe you would have gone in person before mm -hmm. uh, and just dip your lip into the water and see if you like yeah. it. And there's some great classes that, I mean, there's so many great ones to find out that you can really just experience it and see if you like it. So you say, mm -hmm. oh, I want to take a corporate learning class. Okay, I'm going to just take that. I want to take an animation. Oh, I want to take just that. You can really have the experience. You must give it the time to at least learn that, you know, that, that each craft separately, whichever one you're interested in and immerse yourself a, a bit of time into it. So it's like anything, you'll have to invest some time and money. That's right. Uh, but the amazing thing is, is that the very thing that uh, has created us all on Zoom, now all these classes that were in person, because I used to teach um, an animation class and people would stream to just watch, you know, just to be an audit. Mm -hmm. Now, my next class, uh, it's going to be all Zoom. So, and you know, wow. I can have people all over the world coming. I think it's capped at like 10, uh, just because, again, I'm interacting with people. But, you know, I think it's like $70 a class. Uh, so, I mean, if you really want to oh, have these, yeah, it's very reasonable yeah. to find out. If Do I like this or not, right? Exactly. What? what? <laughs> But, it's easy to find out. Do I even like this or not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of my 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 class my students are first timers. Mm -hmm. I've never done an audio. I love video games. I wanted to try it. I mean, and I'm like, great. Let's let's play. So you know, I have everywhere from seasoned people working and coming into my classes and newbies. I yeah. recommend that if people really want to check it out and and if they're already actors and they just want to add this in or they want to see like what is it like just to be a voiceover you can do it for the pure pleasure of trying the experience and see where it takes you i love it i love it and that's why you know that's the I, you just basically laid out why i started artist spotlight because uh before people can just dive into a full you know <laughs> four-year college or something they don't have no idea you know why not get some exposure see if this is your thing and then even while you're in it you might say you know what i didn't like the the, the animation thing but i love that corporate that corporate stuff. Well, I love this the radio. Narrative or the audio books or, yeah, I mean, that's exactly. the thing is that it's, if you, if you just love telling a story or you've had voices in your head and, you know, mm -hmm. since you were five. <laughs> well, that's kind of story. Right? right? You got it. You have right. a place to get it out where, yes, you know, yes. it's going to think like, what is he doing? It's going to be like, yeah, you know, let your inner child. That's why I love teaching animation uh, the most because I really, it's like permission to let your inner child out and, you know, and have that joy experience of, of really being, you know, in that in the booth and just letting Absolutely. all that imagination come to the surface. There are people who sit around and want to imitate cartoons, and it's like, but they don't, they have, they literally have no idea that you could be a taser, right? And that's the that's what I don't like because you spend your whole life in something that you were supposed to you were supposed to be put here to do. So I'm sure you're doing that, and you're teaching, which I love. So. And you're Please getting the message back. out, which is a wonderful. I, I just think it, whoa, <laughs> good for you in your role as interviewer. <laughs> and, and we're going to talk about that too, because you got to whip me into shape for these uh, other interviews and meetings. So we're talking about that. We can talk so, about that afterwards. But you're, doing exactly. you're doing great. That's My right. goal is for the world to know that vernacular of who did I give great voice to today? And that, mm. that can be as simple as did I call my grandma today? Did mm. I did I did I tell somebody instead of texting and emojing and that was the, you know the other that I that mm -hmm. I love them, uh, so mm. or did I did I go into that interview and speak confidently? Did I did I have a, a great meeting where I encouraged my employees and uh, or did I converse with my children in a way that I brought me closer? These are all the assets. And finally, did I did I say something kind to myself? Because that's giving mm. them a voice. We must speak kindly to ourselves Ooh, when we. Do that, we have so much more bandwidth you gave to give right. love to yourself out loud every day and programmed yourself for greatness. I am beautiful. I am positive. I forgive myself. I am amazing. You know, I can do anything I set my mind to. I mean, you know, Anthony Robbins talks about programming. I oh, talk about yeah. affirmations, but it's the self-speak, self-speak. And the self-speak, most of us, the language of self-love is a foreign language to many people. Mm. Say that. To be learned. Tasia, awesome interview. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you, thank Mark, for the pleasure. Very much. And a I, lot of information. I know. <laughs> a lot of information. Too much. I, I, I love it.
I love it. We're going to come back for more. So um, um, blessings to your family. Thank, thank you for being on our show, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you, Morris.